Hi, Gary Stearman. Welcome to Prophecy Watchers. And in studio with me today, a very good friend, Dr. Andy Woods. Uh, we have a few minutes to talk with Andy. He's here to do some video work with us on a couple of his books. Andy, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be talking more about this one uh, on a later program. It's called The Falling Away. And it's a very slender volume, but in my opinion, one of the most important books that's been put together uh, of late. Because Andy, we're in the middle of a debate uh, mm -hmm. about the nature, and particularly the conclusion or the concluding days of the church. Yeah. And I believe this, uh, Satan is using every tool at his disposal mm. to stamp out uh, it, from the minds of the average Christian the belief in the any moment return of Christ. The only way I can describe this uh, vitriolic attack that's come against this doctrine is it's got to be spiritually motivated somehow. And we know that Satan uses different pawns, uh, ill-motivated people. And I think it's time we who have the truth ought to stand up and do as the book of Jude has told us to do. Earnestly contend for the faith once and for all delivered to the saints. That's why I'm thankful for ministries like yours that give us a forum to do this. Well, we do things in a disciplined way. That is to say, we, we read the Bible according to certain rules of interpretation. We, and we read literature the same way. <clears throat> in other words, if I read your book uh, or, or the book of another author, uh, I, I make certain uh, over time mm -hmm. that that author uh, expresses uh, Christian ideas in a way that I understand conforms with a, a certain discipline. You know, I know you're you're extremely well disciplined, mm -hmm. having come out of Dallas Theological Seminary, and and you believe there's a framework within which to present Christianity. However, mm -hmm. we live in the days of the wild, wild west when it comes to the <laughs> internet, if you know what I mean. Yes. And anything goes on the internet. You can have a, a wonderfully uh, a concise and well thought out statement by Dr. Andy Woods and right beside it is somebody else who is screaming and waving his arms. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of those people around today. Yeah. And it's sort of frustrating because there's all these Twitter wars going on and Twitter oh. only gives you a few characters to express your ideas. And the fact of the matter is you can't express cardinal Christian truths in just a few characters. Mm -hmm. You know, It takes yeah. you a little while to develop things. That, that's a good point. Uh, and there are a lot of pseudo-scholars out there uh, who have, and some of, some of them remarkably ignorant, if I may say. Mm -hmm. That's probably the kindest thing that I could say. Uh, who believe that they have the truth and they want everybody to know about the truth and you know and I know that they're as far from the truth sure. as they could possibly be. I mean today in this internet social media society anybody can get their five minutes of fame you just have to have what I call the three G's to succeed in ministry. Number one you gotta have good looks number <laughs> two you've gotta have the gift of gab and number three you've gotta have a guitar so if you've got the three oh. G's. <laughs> and you have to know uh, at least three chords. Yeah, you're going far. <laughs> and th the fact of the matter is, you know, I, I don't consider myself the end-all be-all of scholarship, but I spent a lot of time in school preparing for the ministry. And, you know, a, a, lot, of, a lot of that isn't recognized when we're in this kind of soundbite culture that we're in. Well, and we're talking about reasoning here. And I should mention that you also have a degree in law. And uh, it's fascinating. When I think of law, the, the first word that pops into my head is reasoning, as in legal reasoning. There, you can't just practice law in any old way that you want to. You have to follow a course of reason. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in Christianity, we, there is a, a method of reasoning mm -hmm. within Christianity, and a lot of people like to jump over the traces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people today win arguments by how loud they sound or screaming over somebody. Uh, but I think my legal education was providentially given to me by God because it sort of taught me to express ideas in what, what you would call a logically coherent, consistent manner. And I don't think it's any great shock to discover that some of the greats in church history, whether it's Calvin, Luther, John Nelson Darby, 
if I remember right, CI Schofield, mm -hmm. uh, all had legal training or the practice of law yes. somewhere in their background. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I look at it just as God's providence in my life. Of course, I'm not putting myself in the position of those people. I'm just saying it's a tool that God has given me uh, that, that can be used to kind of get to the heart of issues and things like and, that. And the second thing I think is desire. Uh, what do you desire uh, for the church, the body of Christ? It, it, that is to say, if you were standing in front of a group of Christians, uh, what would you say to them to build them up uh, in Christ? Big question. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not a question that people have to deal with if they're just popping up on the web, uh, hither, thither, and yon. They, they can express their own ideas, but I think what we must do as Christians is try to elevate the dialogue and build up our, the fellow, our fellow saints. Right, through the teaching of the whole counsel of God's Word. And sort of a, a life verse for me is Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 and following, which says God has put spiritual gifts into the church, particularly the gift of pastor-teacher, for the purpose of equipping the saints mm -hmm. so they can be prepared for their ministry. Now how does the pastor teacher equip the saints for the ministry of the laity that they're going to pursue? Because all of us are called to the ministry. Mm -hmm. We all have at least one spiritual gift. Well, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 answers that where he says all scripture is God-breathed and given for you know correction, reproof, yeah. training in righteousness so that the man of God might be thoroughly equipped not for 98% of good works, but for every good work. So sort of my role, and I think your role, uh, is to teach the Bible in a way that people can understand it, that uh, reaches their mind and their heart, and as that's happening they're applying it to their own lives and they're being prepared for the ministry that God has for them, whether it be in the home, the family, the workplace, the local church, etc. So that's what's needed. And you know, the, the, I think the other thing uh, that I see on the internet is a lot of anger. <clears throat> I mean, and you've experienced a lot of anger. I'm not going to name names. I, you and I could name mm -hmm. some names. We're not going to do that. But you've had a lot of anger thrust at you. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, anger has no place in, in the presentation of the Word of God. It, God is love. Mm -hmm. And we lovingly present what we have been given to present in the spirit in which God gave it, and we strive to maintain that. Right here on Prophecy Watchers and our guests uh, uh, talk to us in that spirit. I think they, they're this, we have a, a civilized conversation about uh, sometimes extremely complex ideas, but we try to maintain the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of anger today is what, yeah. I'm, what, I, what I'm working up to. Yeah, you know, when you get to 2 Timothy, which is a pastoral letter, in chapter 2, I think it is, Paul says the servant of the Lord, you know, must not be strident. Mm -hmm. In other words, he must not be the type of person that goes around throwing oratorical bombs, which are designed to incite people's emotions. Right. I mean, that's not Christianity, that's not the work of the Lord. Now there's, there's, a, there's a place for righteous anger, you know, when God's character is being violated. You have examples of Jesus in John 2, you know, overturning the money changers' tables in the, the temple. But this idea of personal vindication, I'm going to personally vindicate my theology, and in a very nasty ad hominem way, way attack the character of somebody else, that isn't God, God at all. That's the work of the flesh. And it violates the standards of God. And people that, that do that really ought to be embarrassed about themselves because they're dishonoring the name of Christ. Now, having said that, uh, Andy, is uh, we're going to be doing a long program about this. Uh, it's a thin book, but it's super important as far as I'm concerned. It's called The Falling Away. And it's uh, a presentation of, of uh, logic and history behind 2 Thess Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 3, and, and, uh, which has become a contra controversial uh, verse of Scripture. And it's a verse that requires logic and very careful study. But most of you probably don't want to spend hours and hours and hours on logic and careful study. <laughs> You'd rather 
take an hour or two. And that's what this book does. I'm, and it's just a remarkable mm -hmm. book, Andy. And, and we're going to be spending uh, time on another program. Yeah, and praise the Lord because that was its intent. It was not intended to reach the high level of scholars. It, it was just intended to reach the average person who maybe is struggling with the rapture, yeah. wondering what the decibel volume is all about, right. why people get you know their, the vein on their neck start to pop <laughs> out and they get red. I mean, what's everybody upset about? Well, this book will explain it. I think it's fair to both sides, and it'll explain why Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3a is really a rapture passage and really puts the cement or the icing on the cake, I should say, proving the final nail in the coffin that the doctrine of the pre-tribulational rapture is the correct view. We love the idea uh, of the pre-tribulational rapture of the church, and it seems to me so natural to think of it in that way. Uh, if God uh, wasn't so deeply characterized by love, uh, the rapture might be a hard thing to believe in. But in fact, God is love. And I love uh, the epistle of 1 John where John says yeah. twice, God is love, yeah. which is one of the most remarkable statements in the Bible. And having that basis, uh, the loving acts of God then do not seem quite so unbelievable. I think the rapture to most people is kind of unbelievable, mm -hmm. but there it is. Mm -hmm. It's in print. Yeah, it doesn't, the verses you quoted, they don't even say God is loving. They just say God is love. Yeah. And, you know, would it be consistent with the character of God to beat the daylights out of his bride no. who he's engaged to before they get married? That, that makes no logical sense it whatsoever. It doesn't even hold up to careful analysis of the Bible. So I like what you say, you know. Um, the, the love of God is sort of a rubric through which we can view a lot of things in the Bible, if not the whole Bible. Well, you're going to enjoy hearing uh, our longer conversations uh, on Andy's uh, book, The Falling Away, and uh, w where we have time to develop the ideas more fully. Andy, it's great to see you, uh, and may the Lord uh, bless your work. You, you live, of course, in the Houston area. You pastor a church. And uh, if you might uh, keep Andy in your prayers. I pray that the Lord will lead him, and lift him up, that his congregation will be blessed. Andy, come see us again. Uh, absolutely. Thanks for having me again. Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.